Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! Woohoo! Arms of the Angels! <laughs> <laughs> if you ever wanted to find more rest in your life when the world won't stop, then do we have the show for you. Today we'll talk about catching your breath, catching your breath, finding a respite, and how to find a way to slow your mind down when the world just won't stop. That plus we'll talk about the beauty of sea slugs, the danger of sandbars, what in the world is applied kinesiology, grounding to the earth, when to walk instead of run, and why 10,000 blueberries may just be the greatest gift in the world. <laughs> so welcome to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woohoo! <laughs> so before we dive right into things, what just happened with your coffee? Um, I, I just spilled coffee all over myself as I was walking over. I don't think I have any stains, or at least the shirt isn't showing it. Um. <laughs> I thought it somehow seemed appropriate of the how to find rest when the world won't stop, and you're, you're sprinting along with your coffee, so certainly personifying the same challenge this yeah. week. Yes, I am definitely in that same place. My meditations have been um, not ideal, although I did a body of work yesterday to... Um, keep me more grounded. Mm -hmm. I haven't been breathing. You know, when you breathe up and you're breathing down versus breathing and expanding all the way yes. up, I've been shallow breathing all so, this week. And that's Even what, when I'm consciously trying to change it. Have you taken a sticky note, put it on your computer, put it on yourself. Self. It's, it's sort of like having one of those rocks. It's something that says, just breathe. No, I actually have it on my um, my arm. It vibrates. And it keeps telling you breathe? No. What happens is um, Fitbit has 10 minutes before the hour um, a reminder to move. And so that reminder to move reminds me to get up, walk around, breathe, connect to my um, oneness. I think that one of the things that I've been working on is, you know, there's the ego me, there's my higher spirit, and then who knows what other schizophrenic versions of me are running around. But, uh, you know, because when you do different types of work, that probably when you're coaching, a certain aspect of yourself shows up, which is different than when you're editing the show, which is different than for me, like when I'm actually working with my kids. Um, so those different aspects of CJ show up, and it's like snapping it to be instead of um, a jumbled mess to just always tune back into the one higher source and that that source can do everything like you don't have to have your ego running around and your planning version I mean those things will always be there because that's also part of the oneness so I love it I've been the theme for myself this week and and Jessica has been saying "Ooh, I like this but are you going to be able to keep it up which is I've been trying to remember that we're all love. We all come from love. We all embody love. We're imbued with love. Every cell of our being is love and to bring that love to everything that I do. So that's why Jessica has been joking. She's like, you're treating me so incredibly loving. You're, you're spoiling me. Are you going to be able to keep this up? So my theme has been no matter how crazy anything gets, no matter how much we're still trying to fix a green screen 30 seconds before an interview, as we're playing this, I'm like, how can I remember to stay in that place of love? And it's admittedly, it's challenging when, you know, things are falling out of the sky and you're going, we're love. And, and I'm not, I, I say that and I can hear part of me or maybe it's other people going, yeah, right. When the going gets tough, it's challenging at those times. But I'm just mm -hmm. trying to remember and to remember and bring it back to that centered place of I am love. And, and this week has been a major, I want to say a mega energy shift as I'm doing that in the craziness because I guess we had, maybe it's everything, I don't know, catching up is the right word, but it's been a busy few weeks and, and it hasn't, last week we were playing catch up, we thought we'd be caught up this week, it looks like next week's looking great, but you have to find a way to center and ground yourself as the whole world is revved up and going to love for me this week has been magical. I'm thinking now, I was doing an interview a couple of days ago, or I guess it was just before the interview, and I'm like, Jessica, quick, baby deer, 
there were baby oh. deer, two of them, like twins, hanging out right outside the window. And they're like smaller than baby sheep. These are tiny little things. Oh, so cute. So cute. And they move so fast and they wanted to hang out in our yard. I had to take that as a good oh, energetic yeah. sign. But yeah. getting into that place of love, I think even in the craziness, you start to see the magic around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny because I had, not surprisingly, because we always saw, seem to center around similar themes, is that this morning I woke up and uh, I did my channeled writing. And uh, what I got was that, um, well, it's talking about pain as a harbinger for, as just a messenger. Pain is a messenger. And so instead of I think what happens is that when pain arises for me or stress or, you know, a stressful day or a crazy day or filled with stuff, that pain, um, there's this kind of attacking, protecting feeling like, okay, I'm going to get this. I'm going to go tackle the day or, you know, I'm going to go for it. Or even, um, I've noticed that, um, uh, there's this gal that I've, I, I've, I follow her body of work and uh, she talks about white light coming and eradicating and destroying um, uh, dark energy. And I even think I'm t my channeled writing this morning was questioning that even attitude because there's kind of an attacking. Like, so if you attack with white light, there's something seemingly off with that versus just allowing white light to surround and gently yes. permeate and loosen. It's like... Um, bubble of uh, white like light. A, yeah like a candle being um, melted by hot wax it changes form and in that changing of the form it changes everything right it changes the way that that item was being held and when it shifts perspective from being held into a candle this big to a shrunken round that's kind of melted on the side surrounded by heat and light um it can then shift to where like then your body can operate and do what it needs to do um, but I, I only mention it cause I was thinking a lot of spiritual folks, they talk about like the white light coming in and saving the day, you know, like it's, I think <laughs> I, I'm beginning to question that. And, and, and I'm, I'm all for no fight, anything, no fight, yeah. no fight. In fact, to say no fight implies fight, embrace, bring in, it all is. Mm -hmm. I wish you could see yourself about 30 seconds ago when yeah. you said instead bring in the white light and melt. When you said the word, approximately the word melt, and people will be replaying this, there was a softness yeah. that came over your face when you said that, that That's went, nice. it was there, it was there. Um, the softness, after the word fight, it was, it was noticeably your face was different. It melted when you said the word melted. And then when you brought the word fight back up, your face changed again. It's all about the energies of the thought and even the word that we're using that changes our energy and our perspective on everything around us. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's funny because I um, before meeting with you, I just had a meeting with a client and uh, she was saying that she's in a space where her whole office is, she said, I'm going through a downward spiral. And uh, in fact, after two clients this week who had a very similar kind of scenario where there was one was where they're surrounded by um, up, you know, senior people going, where are the numbers? What's happening? What are you guys doing? Are you doing enough? What are you doing? Why aren't you, why isn't stuff coming together? You know, and like every time they meet, it's just this like driving attack. And then uh, this other one has just one person in her office. So she has a group of people who are just very peaceful, nice, calm people. And there's one that's kind of attacking. Why did you do it that way? How come this is happening? Why did you get that award? You know, like, and when you have that kind of um, fear based bullying kind of negative energy, um, it's hard not to get affected by that. Um, but the pain, right, which is like, you know, which is either the pain or the shock of being like stressed out or having all those things is just a messenger to go, oh, okay, how can I um, just surround myself with love and light and remember that it's all around me? Like, I think remembering is one and then surrounding yourself is another. And, and then I think 
a lot of spiritual folks talk about the white light obliterating, like it's a, f- a force of good, you know, like force of good. And I think that that, even that is not quite right. It's, I think I like your idea of just gently like surrounding yourself, melting, you know, like that. And then you could extend it out like even to those around you. So I had a, a customer service call earlier today where we were, mm-hmm. we were misbilled, all the usual stuff, and you could see how it's going, and, and they're on the phone defending themselves. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, let's crank up the love. Let's crank up the love. Let's crank up the love. And it worked. Mm. <laughs> and we got off that. We're like, how does it get any better than this? Woohoo! Because yeah. the, the other person actually felt better. The yeah. other person... We wanted, we were very cognizant of what they're saying. We wanted them to be able to feel heard, completely and totally heard. Everybody wants to feel heard. Mm -hmm. And then we helped give them the opportunity to make things right for us. Right. That's nice. That's very nice. I love it. So what's been stressing you out? What are the things that are going on aside from sea slugs and sandbars? It's not stress. It, well, <laughs> when Jessica works on the green screen and an hour before an interview, that's been tough. Other than yeah. the green screen, because I have a protocol for this is flying. To me, this is flying an airplane. And, and people watching on YouTube, you can see it looks like both of us are wearing uh, headphones for flying an airplane. And that's how I view it. I have a two-hour out checklist. I have my one-hour out checklist. I have everything that I'm taking care of before flight. And so when somebody comes in and says, I'm going to change the wheels on your airplane or take out the motor and replace it with a new one right before you take off, oh, that's very challenging. Disruptive for you. Yeah. Oh, Other than that, it's just been the, um, the constant pace this week. It's been a, a pace that hasn't really backed off. And so it has been, how can I find the softness, the gentleness in this pace. And one thing that that I joked about in the beginning has been we've been walking more than running, trying to rest and recover our body. And maybe we'll talk Mm -hmm. about this applied kinesiologist we met. There are no coincidences in life. And after he worked on us, he said, take it easy this week. And the body, I think, has been asking for it. It's been seeing the beauty right before us that you wouldn't see if you're moving fast. We saw Jessica spotted it before me. It kind of looked like this, I don't know, puddle of mush in the ocean right near the seashore until we saw a breathing pattern to it. And it's called a sea hare or a version of a sea slug. Mm, And it's about mm. the size of my hand. It weighed, I don't know, three or four pounds. And um, it was this kind of gelatinous. It seems like it's a relative of a... um, of a, either an octopus, a squid, or or a um, all the tentacles coming down. Why am I spacing the name of of um, this beautiful octopus? No, nope, no, nope. um, like they're a jellyfish. It, it a seems jellyfish, like a relative, yeah. so an octopus, a squid, or jellyfish, and it, and it ended up. We followed it for about ten or fifteen minutes until the water pushed it in and it beached itself. And I sent it so much love and sent it love and sent it love. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be harmed. And I scooped it up and then I walked and waited out until I put it in some deeper water. And it's such a magical experience. It, it turns out they, their natural defense is ink. Um, that mm. they, they squirt you with an, a, a horrible tasting ink for those that, that eat it. But but it didn't have the urge to ink me, which was kind of cool. It, yeah, it got the cool. idea. I wonder what was, would have happened if you had gotten ink. I think I would have, would have had a little uh, ink stain on me. But my moving more slowly, maybe it's connecting to the earth. Something you wanted to talk about grounding, but doing that has allowed me in this pace that has been go 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 to take it more in my kind, gentle, easy, good fashion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, my, I had a very, um, I did a huge body of work yesterday and it was about, um, like not, not breathing properly. And then each time when I've tuned into my energy, there was like a kink, like it kind of was like this, you know, where it was on the kinked over to the side. And I was like, wow, what is going on? And I realized that there was a, a fear of grounding into the earth. Um, if, if I was completely aligned, like a, a, a pencil, you know, stuck into the earth, like if I was completely aligned, then I was, there was a fear somehow associated with that, which I did a bunch of work to clear the fear, fears that I had. Um, but what happens is that I feel like um, the societal message around us is that 
we always have to protect ourselves. We have to be protecting ourselves. We need to plan. We need to be vigilant against um, a world that's out to get us. You know, that kind of energy that surround us a lot. You know, that's kind of the, there's so much phrases in our society that talk about this. You know, I talked about, you know, like no pain, no gain, you know, like this kind of drive forward and, and, uh, and, and I realized that that kind of vigilance and uh, got to go get it, got to go plan, got to, all that stuff is just super exhausting. One, and if you really think about why does someone do that, it's so that they can be safe and protected. And you're reacting to what you think is out there harming you. A very different way of of, of being is just being present, like you were with the sea slug, slug, right? Where you were just present with it and responding versus reacting. And if you can just be calm enough and still enough to be present, you can actually respond and protect yourself to be safe. It's a very different kind of energy than the I need to react and protect and do stuff and, you know, build fortifications <laughs> and plans and be vigilant, you know, attack things, you know, go attack that darkness with light. You know, <laughs> it's just a very different kind of energy. It's it, like you said, it's kind of softer mm-hmm. and um, gentler and in some ways way easier, right? Like all you have to do is just relax and then you can be protected I'm and so be present. You, yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because it, it also, if we want to talk about happiness which is a big theme here the i must build the fortress before i can let my guard down suggests that i'm never happy because i'm always going to be building the fort there's always some reason i need to build the fort stronger higher better um wealthier bigger you name it before we can finally uh, according to the societal rules before we i have finally made it enough that we can let our guard down right or yeah we can just be with the sea slug now right. or, or whatever the sea slug is to us. <laughs> right. But what's so interesting is that that was a perfect um, example because had you, oh my gosh, there's a sea slug. Oh, isn't this the one that shoots poison at? Oh my gosh, I have to protect myself. Let's just, you know, stay away from the sea slug. Um, but instead you're like, no, if I am just calm and, and responsive, right? Like had the sea slug, you know, presented an area of safety concern, you would have react, you know, you would have responded, probably not reacted or some combination of the two, but you would have been in a different place versus reacting, which is like, there's a sea slug. I must run away. I must put like, you know, a little fortress around the sea slug so that it doesn't <laughs> attack me. It's well, just if- a very different way of living of which feels like kind, that's going back to your kind, gentle, easy, good, right? It's much more kinder to just be calmly present and respond versus reacting and vigilant. <laughs> to use another example, um, I've been watching, there's at the, the south end of Emerald Isle, it's such a magical place. There's there's a, a like a sandbar presence that ebbs and flows over years mm. on the south part of the island that sometimes is half a mile wide, sometimes I've heard is three or four miles wide. And, and it changes each year. And you can see just off the shore of the sandy area that you can walk and hike and run on, um, you can see waves hitting each other in different directions because there's sand not too far beneath the surface. And we've been getting to around a low tide and, and during our morning run time right now, seven, eight in the morning for Jessica and I, and I've been wanting to explore. And so yesterday I, I saw the edge of the sandbar and so I took a few steps out onto it. You know, I actually said a, a prayer first for safety and guidance and, and I said I want to pay attention because I know it looks like it's shallow over there, but that could actually be a very, very strong current. So let's be real mm. careful. And I stepped out a few steps, felt great. I stepped out a few steps more, watched a whole school of tiny, tiny little silverfish jump up out of the water in front of me, down, oh, and repeated cool. it two or three times. I'm like, ah, oh, this is magical. Took one more step, felt the energy, the best way I can describe it, go from my head whoop, down to the floor. Mm. and turned around and walked back. It was. Oh, what do you t- think that energy was? Then? Oh, it was very clear. If I had taken another step or two, the current was going to be way too strong. I was going to probably mm. yank my feet out from underneath me. Wow. And being super present. I didn't feel it as a fear. I literally felt it as an energy dropping down through me. 
Wow. And I'm like, Fascinating. Back. Back is good. Back is perfect. <laughs> With, <laughs> I yeah, was, you're responding to the energy. Exactly. No, mm. no judgment, no anything, <laughs> just a hyper presence that I'm not supposed to take another step in that direction, CJ. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, um, I, I, um, yesterday I told you how I was trying to get grounded into earth and the kind of a fear of being not aligned. And, uh, and what happens to me is when I do connect into earth, like you did with the, what, when you were talking about the earth coming down or the energy, like in grounding your feet and then responding, um, I was thinking about, uh, yesterday, I was afraid to connect to earth and then I was doing all this work to do energy work to connect to earth. And when I did, it was like, uh, I don't know, madness. Like there's so much energy running through my body. And, um, and, uh, the person I worked with said, you know, if, if you were to be in front of a medical doctor, they would think that you're having an epileptic fit because you're, I'm sh I was shaking so much and so much energy was running through my body that she said, I, I think that people would be worried, like they would hospitalize you. But I know b because she's done this work herself and she's had all these energetic changes that this is just energy and you're responding to the energy. And if you tune in, what reminded me of your story is if you tune into that energy, it's there to help you, right? Like that Absolutely. energy was there to help you. And so tuning and being grounded into the earth, um, even though it shook the loving heck out of me, like I was just shaking and like my arms are flapping and like my body was like, I couldn't breathe properly. Like there was, it was interesting because the earth was trying to heal me. Like it was, the energy was running through me and, and I'm not sure why for me, cause I, I, for whatever reason, I am, I have this kind of Pele energy. So when it, when energy hits me, it's just like, like it's explosive. Yeah. So it's kind of explosive for, I'm serious. I was shaking and moving like that for about a half an hour. And, uh, but at the same time it was healing like that earth energy. If you allow it, if you are present enough to it, and if you're willing to respond to it, because I think a lot of people would have, um, in the past, I would have resisted like, what's that? That's weird. I'm not going to do that. That's bizarre. I look weird. I'm not going to do any of that. But if I just kind of like let the energy move through me and respond to it, like you did, right? You saw, you felt the earth come down and then you just, and then you walk back, right? But if you let, if you can just respond to it, it's actually there to heal you. And it, and, uh, it was interesting. I talked to this one woman and she said that different shakes, like sometimes I, ha I go like this, like my arm just flails up. If you see people having Kriyas, which is this, uh, your body having an energetic reaction to the energy. Mm -hmm. This is, she said, this is fire. So and the arm went, flapping up yeah, in front of you is yeah, fire. You see you, like this, it kind of has that. And then there's, there's water, which has this kind of feeling. It, it Sway, kind of feels, feely. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like a, uh, that kind of thing. And earth, which is this energy like this, which is kind of like circular, like a uh, centrifugal force around. Um, and then shaking. I do a lot of shaking, which I can't remember what that is, but it's probably, uh, I can't remember what that is. And then breathing, which is metal. And so she explained to me, cause I, I've been just shaking, not knowing what it is, but she said, Oh, that's the earth. And the elements are going through you trying to balance your energy. And so once I knew that, I can kind of rest and like, oh, okay, it's like a healing that's happening. You know, I have my energy isn't quite aligned. And so the earth energy, the air energy, the fire energy is trying to kind of get my system back into balance. But you can only do that if you're connected to earth. So it's, you need to connect to earth. And I'm, I want to go there in just a second. In fact, need to connect to earth, need to breathe. And I, I would think be present so that you're not fighting it. Because if right. you fight it, it can't resolve itself. You can't integrate. You're disintegrating. Yeah, you surrender, itself. surrender into it. Going back to grounding, before we moved here, and, and you're challenging me, and I've been challenged by this applied kinesiologist, um, I'm usually always grounded. So we're, we always walk barefoot whenever possible. Yeah. But usually here in the studio, I have a grounding pad under my hands or under my nice. feet that's plugged into ground in the house. We sleep on grounding sheets so that we can always be discharging that energy. And I know mm -hmm. this evening, after all of the fun is done for the, today, and I have some beautiful coaching sessions coming up, after that, I'm going to go out into the garage, 
and get all of our grounding paraphernalia and literally have us grounded or connected to the earth in our studio, in our bedroom again, because that help diffuses a lot of that energy. And that's energy that if people are going, well, what is that energy really? Well, in the winter time, it's why you can shuffle across a carpet and zap somebody because you're not grounded. It's why you have a third plong on your electrical or like on your computer so that it can stay grounded and protect its electronics. You need to stay grounded as well. And so mm -hmm. I'm literally going to go get my gear and get grounded. <laughs> that helps take me as well either out of a place of shakes or just, it just feels like a discharge, like a, like an ah, like being at the beach or like we all have this, this universal urge until we're told it's something gross or something to go barefoot through the grass and that ah, that you get from being grounded. So mm -hmm. earlier this week I had, we had our, our little Suzuki SX4, we're at the beach, we still have on our, our old uh, I don't even know what you call them, stickies, plaques, something on it from our, our Barefoot Running, our grounded book many, many years ago. And we run into this gentleman there who goes, I know your book. I know you. I love you guys. And he was talking to us <gasps> about grounding. He was an applied kinesiologist. So cool. He was traveling through. It turns out he was staying at the house next to ours, synchronicity of synchronicity. Oh my gosh. He heals by... Um, talking with the body through muscle testing, but not just hold up your arm, push your arm down, and all these different intricate positions, but he uses mudras, positions of the mm. fingers, to ask the body, is this chemical, is this physical, is this emotional, is this mm. energetic, what's mm. going on, where's going on? So he laid me down on this table, and he did some muscle testing, and then he's going and he's testing, uh, he's asking all these questions through muscle testing, and he's like, your right calf is tight. And your what? Your right calf is tight. And yeah. uh, there's something over here with your left knee. And he was spot on every single time. And he said, you've got seven major injuries that your body has yet to resolve and pointed out yeah. each one spot yeah. on. And he's like, what I can do is I can basically, by pressing on origin and insertion points of the muscle or going after spindle cells within the muscle, I can literally reset those things based on what the body is asking for. Mm. It was fascinating. Now, during that time, he was literally standing on a grounding mat, which was mm. <laughs> a sign and symbol for getting grounded. Jessica and I both did it. It was mind-blowing. The concept mm. that you can ask the body and the body knows. Clearly, the body has an intelligence. We don't heal a wound. The body takes care of that on its own. We're just an observer of it. But the communication, the level of communication that he has, some of this being ancient technique, probably thousands of years old, so I'm incredibly new, was just jaw-dropping. I have a couple questions. So the mudras for people who aren't familiar, they're these Indian symbols that you have for like, they're different hand gestures that you yeah, make yeah. that tune into energy. So you're saying he's using muscle testing, which is usually like you can do fingers or you can do this one. So he's doing muscle testing. Yeah, much more advanced. So he, in okay. one hand, he'll do a mudra. So maybe if you cross the fingers, that means chemical. If you use right. another finger, oh. that means physical. If you use another finger, that might mean spiritual. And, and oh. so there are four main ones. And then in his other hand, he's got some sort of a, a wheel attached by a belt to him that he runs his fingers across. And if it goes without resistance, that's a probably a no. If it goes with a resistance, which you'll hear is a squeak, He's getting a yes. So it's going as he's running his hand down, almost like playing a guitar on a wheel. Okay, so there's something attached to his hands. That's Some, no, something up. attached around his belt. And so he has his hand mm. down by his side and he's running his hand over this kind of like slippery wheel. And if instead of his hand slipping, his hand catches on the slippery wheel, it makes a skidding sound. Okay, so this hand is actually going over your body. One hand is going over your body. The other doing one is mudras, doing muscle yep. testing to like see strong, hold strong for yes, go weak for no, and that. And then basically figuring out in your body whether it's chem based on the mudra, whether it's a chemical, physical, or whatever kind of energetic. And that's one thing, thing that he does. And then asking the body, where is it? So he'll scan with one hand um, over 
uh, Jessica has a foot that's been swollen since literally the day we've got day after we got married. There's some symbolism in there, and, and it still hasn't resolved itself. And so he could run his hand over it while muscle testing, squeak, 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 squeak on the wheel, sliding his hand over the wheel, and I'll get to a particular spot, sliding his hand, sliding his hand, and I'll go ur, 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 with that one hand, and it'll back up and it'll go away. He'll go back on, ur, 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 and he can find the exact spot. <laughs> through this advanced version of muscle testing. And he wow. was spot on. I had a surgical spot on my right knee that hasn't resolved itself since it was operated on in 89 or 90. That still gives me trouble. I did not tell him about it. There is no scar from 89. It was a tiny little arthroscopy, uh, arthroscopy operation, a little scope where they made just a tiny little nick and went in. Um, and, and yet he's like, here. And all of a sudden, drove his thumb straight in. I'm like, electrical shot. I'm like, how did you know? Uh, and he's like, uh, the body told me. What I find is so fast. So um, on Wednesday of this week, I had an uh, intuitive healer come on. And uh, she works with uh, God and angels and such. And she uh, used to be a nurse. And she uses her eyes. So she'll be blinking like this and like she'll do a scan. So her scan is like a CAT scan, but with her eyes. So she'd be looking and like looking at your head and like, okay, cranial sacral, like left, right on the Same right on stuff. the neck. Yeah. So she's going through and kind of with her eyes and she scanning and right means uh, there's an issue. There's something left. There's some energy disturbance left is it's fine. So she scans her whole body. And then I had two, uh, two um, listeners come in and they said that she was super accurate with the kind of stuff that she was able to pick up. I mean, it's kind of shocking. And then she does, when she works with people, she just blinks at them and it's like, she's channeling God's light through her eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was just, it's crazy. To, it's, it's amazing all the different modalities that people work with. I mean, this is something that she just, it just came to her. Mm -hmm. This gentleman for applied kinesiology, did he, did, did he develop it? Did he learn it? How did he? How did he? It come sounds up like with it's it? a combination of many modalities. He's a, he's a, gone through chiropractic college and he learned from a mentor how to do a lot of the basics, and then he's built onto that. He has a website. I think it's cleanmylivingcomputer.com on how you can read the body, and so he's put a lot of these techniques together over the years. But it's probably, I mean, the mudras have been there for, what, thousands of years, Ayurveda. Yeah. So the body we've known as a science, Ayurveda is probably 5,000 years old, that the body can speak to us. To me, it's actually in many ways more advanced than medicine, which you take a pill, it goes after one thing, it affects a whole bunch of others. But mm -hmm. it's not the intelligence of the body speaking to us. Right. Yeah, I think that that's a, there's a, a different mindset. It, it goes back to what we were saying before. If you're like, I'm going to obliterate that cancer or attack that cancer. And I think it's a, it, there's, you know, there are certain things like maybe cancer is one of those things that you do that with. Like you don't, you know, surround it with gentle love, easy, good. I don't, I, that may be a bad one to use as an example, but from working with my dog, messenger, from working my dog pumpkin who had cancer and, and, and reading a bunch of books by Deepak on it, my belief was, and probably still is, if there's a way to remove the tuber, remove it as quickly as you can. Right. Then go after it with all the, the love, love and light and, and healing. That's, 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 and and I, I must say to everybody out there, I know nothing. I pretend to know nothing. And certainly meeting with this applied kinesiologist, I know I know even less than nothing. In a good way. I'm so open. Who knows about any of this? <laughs> In in the most beautiful <laughs> way, CJ. You know, it's funny because I I I um I think the two of us are really open, right? That's probably and it's very few people. And I was wondering because uh you know when we were saying like the stuff in the beginning where I'm shaking and you're feeling, you know, not everyone's gonna. I have girlfriends who are like, how do you even feel this stuff? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just really open. So people may not feel that they need the grounding sheets or any of those things because they can't feel a difference. But if you're super open, you actually feel a difference when this happens. And I was thinking when we had this gal on, one of the gals that we had on had um, cancer. She had uh, breast cancer that she decided not to have operated on. And so it had reached advanced stages and she was trying to figure out if there was alternative techniques aside from operating that she should work on. And, um, 
And I thought, oh, I don't know. You know, I'm not sure exactly what to think of this. But then I think part of it is she was so, her doctors have given her pretty bad messages, like you're terminal. You probably have three or four months to live. And this gal who was a healer said, I can heal you. You, you don't have to die. And I thought, I don't, I don't know if you should say that to a person. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, and I really was, I was very, um, unsure what was happening, you know, like, you know, I'm just the, you know, the, the interviewer and I I don't really know, can she heal this woman? I don't know. Can the, cause the woman has to want to be healed and have hope. Um, but is it advanced beyond that? I don't, I don't really know, but a part of me did, um, how's this related? That's related to the thing that we're just talking about. (laughs) I'm not even sure. Oh, that, that if you're open-minded to it and if you're open to it, then it can actually work. And I thought, well, what's the worst going to happen? The worst that's going to happen is someone has hope that something that is physical is going to resolve itself. And isn't that enough for healing? Like, Absolutely. It right. Certainly so who can. knows? Like, you know, this applied kinesiology guide, this other woman who's doing all this stuff with the blinking, who the hell knows if it's working? But if you believe it's working and you have the hope and promise and are open, then it's probably going to do more than not, not doing nothing. I look at it as all energy. And, yeah. and if you, I, I also look at it as taking your power back, having your body speak for you, I think is more than, please, doctor, please, magic wizard out there, please take care of me. If we believe we're going to heal, we stand, because the doctor doesn't do, a, a doctor, the best doctor in the world still doesn't heal us. It's still our own body that heals. Mm. which means we need to be in alignment with the energy of healing for that healing to take place. Now that's still, there's no judgment. It doesn't mean everybody's going to heal because we came in here with a soul plan. And if our plan is to check out at a certain time, we may be checking out no matter what in the world we do about it. Right. But we will be putting ourselves in alignment, a belief system that I can heal. I can do this. I can do this with or without surgery, with this gentleman, without that gentleman, but there's a way I can do it. Then we stand a decent chance. If somebody on the other hand says, trying to bite my tongue here, I consider it a crime. I don't know what any other way to say it. Says you're not going to heal. Right. You're going to die in four months. It's in in a sense, it seals your fate. For 99.9% of us who goes, that's it, I better pack up my da- bags. And if somebody yeah. does that for you, it's terrible. If they do that to your animal, your pet, and says your pet's not going to make it, it's terrible because that's a terminal diagnosis. It doesn't mean that what you've got is terminal. There's a huge right, difference between yeah. the two. There's a, there's point one of a percent who are going to fight that like heck, and I applaud them. But I think it's a crime to tell somebody you're not going to make it. You've got X, Y, Z. Because we don't know. Anita Morjani, I was just reading about her again today, and we've had her on a show. Amazing human being. She was pretty much dead on a table, had cancer, organs shut down. She's in a coma. That's it. She's going down for the count. And all of a sudden, she wakes up. The cancer's rolled back. And I don't know if it was days or weeks before the cancer is completely gone, never to return. Wow. So if you give up on somebody or if you tell somebody you're not going to make it, it's not giving that possibility for the magic to occur. And we're all magic. If we go to a quantum level, we don't even exist. We're tiny little specks of energy. Right. I think that that, I think it's the thing that you'd mentioned, which is, you have a soul plan. So if you, if you decide to hear someone's terminal prognosis and say, yes, I'm going to die, then you probably are going to die. If you think, no, it's not my time. I'm going to live. Then you probably will, you know, like you have to have hope. If you don't have hope or faith, I think it's probably more than hope. I think it's faith. If you have faith, then I think things could change up. So even if you know, this applied kinesiologist, this gal that was blinking, if she gives someone hope and faith that something greater is happening to them and, you know, you can't defy your soul plan, but, you know, if someone can survive from being in a coma and cancer, then why couldn't she, right? 
Yeah, and and I believe this gentleman who's doing applied kinesiology, I, I want to send people in his, his way all day long. To me, it makes so much more sense that the body is speaking to us and we can give the body what it's asking for. So mm -hmm. to me, that makes all the sense in the world. But this is this is all about, I guess what we're talking today is about what's flow mm -hmm. and where we find flow, whether it's in medicine, whether it's in being in a hurry and having to get go or being stressed out. If we can find a way to get back into that positive resonance of flow and not fighting the world or fighting the situation. So it's sort of like to go one last thing on the medical side, war on cancer, war on heart disease, war on that. What you resist persists. Right. Embrace, embody, ask, why are you here, cancer? How are you here to serve me and how can I serve you? If you embrace instead, you're more likely to find a way through. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, if you think about okay, you have a piece of fruit and there's like a little spot that's, um, you know, not doing so well, a little brown spot. You just carve it out, right? You don't go attacking the apple. <laughs> 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 but I think to your point, you carve out the little, you're not going to eat the apple with the little brown spot, right? You carve it out. And so, you know, maybe um, all you have to do is, you know, cut it out, carve it out, whatever it is. But the attacking energy, like you don't carve it like this, <clears throat> you know, through the apple. It's <laughs> just like, just take a little paring knife and carve it out. Mm -hmm. So if we can just, and, and, and you were talking about work um, earlier, and, I, and I, one of my channeled writings was, you know, you think about work as work. I'm going to work. I'm going to go work on that video. I'm going to go, it's got to be hard and I've got to work. <laughs> Like there's this the work has a bad name where where if you just like, oh, and, and, it, and so in my channeled writing, it said, what if you viewed this as a different way of expressing your divinity? I'm like, oh, that changes the frame of work from Everything. I got a lot of work to do. I've got all this stuff that I have to do versus, wow, here's a different way for me to have my divinity show up. You know, I'm washing the dishes. That's a different side of me my divinity and oneness still shows up as when I'm doing this radio show with you, as when I'm working with a coach. It's just like different ways of your divinity to express themselves. Then it feels, it's that um, whole thing, the sukha and stira and um, yoga, where it's effort and ease. Like, how can you apply effort? We're doing a show, there's effort, mm -hmm. but how can you do it with ease? Instead of thinking, I'm working now, you know, <laughs> that's, that's another thing that I've been toying around with. Going along those lines, it makes me think of Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. And and the David is within. The David mm -hmm. is within whatever we are doing, whether it's mm -hmm. a clean dish, whether it's paperwork quote, being done, whether it is creating a show, whatever it is, if we can get into that flow state, that state of allowance and allow, like you're saying, the divinity to come out, then we don't have to fight the marble <laughs> right. to get the David to come out but we simply allow it. We put the chisel there, sure, there's effort. That's what you're talking about. There's effort of, of hitting the hammer against the chisel, but then this magnificent divine something, in this case David, comes out of the experience because we didn't fight it. And I guess that's yeah. my biggest theme this week is that no matter how crazy the world appears to be, if you don't fight it, if you instead, I'm going to go the open hearted warrior, the embrace the experience, even in the nuttiness of the experience, when you're not resisting against it, it completely, like you're saying, it's not work. <laughs> right. <laughs> it changes I'm not everything. Used to, I'm, not, I'm used to me, seeing me do that stuff, but I'm not used to seeing you make those faces. It's funny. <laughs> Any final words before we wrap up? That was a beautiful way to wrap up, if if not. I'm just in a loving place this week. I think just the more we can remember, we came from love, we are love, we embody love, we go back to love. Everything about us is love. And if you can plug into that, not just even in the difficult moments, especially in the difficult moments. It 
changes everything. Yep. And breathe. <laughs> I love how your voice just dropped. I think both of our voices dropped down at least an octave. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Any last words, CJ? I'm good. For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, CJ. Saying, be well, have fun, bring love to whatever you're doing, and of course, breathe deep. And Shine bright. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> awesome, CJ. I feel like we're that guy painting, you know, the really calm guy who's painting. That was this is one of those shows. <laughs> we needed a good yin show. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>